We're going to go through how you can calculate pressures while volume, temperature, and amounts of gas are changing without using any equations. This is probably one of the easier way and is better than using equations because this is going to demonstrate that you understand the relationships between these four variables. Now, the theory behind this, before we show the actual calculations, is that if we look at graphs of pressure versus absolute temperature, so temperature in kelvins, if we look at a graph of pressure versus amount of a gas, and if we look at pressure versus volume, we'll find that these two, if temperature is in kelvins, the pressure and temperature are directly proportional. And what that means is, if I double the temperature, the pressure will double. If I triple the temperature, the pressure will triple. Okay, that's what's unique about the Kelvin scale. If I double the amount of gas, the pressure will double. If I triple it, it'll triple. It'll go up by some factor of proportionality. The pressure and volume, on the other hand, are inversely proportional, but they are proportional in the inverse relationship. So if I half the volume, my pressure will double. If I third of my volume, my pressure will triple. If I double my volume, my pressure will half. So what we can do is, what we can do is we can do a problem and we can analyze whether, how this will affect the particular thing. So here's how you would set this up. We have a gas law problem. Uh, initial volume of 18 liters, temperature goes from 330 to 450, find the new volume. Surely you could go through and use an equation to solve that. However, the other way to do this is to simply fill out a chart like this. So we have 18 liters of gas to start. Our temperature goes from 330 kelvins. We're in kelvins, that's good, we can write that down. Our final is 450 kelvins. Okay. We're looking for what our final volume is. We're assuming the amount and the pressure stay constant. What we can do is we can say, will increasing the temperature cause the volume to go up or to go down? Well, these are directly proportional. So, what that means is increasing the temperature is going to cause the volume to go up, which is very intuitive. If you heat a balloon, you expect it to expand. The fact that it's going to go up and that it's directly proportional means I don't need to do any equations to calculate this. All I need to do is say, I start with 18 liters, and I'm going to adjust it proportionally to these two amounts. So since it's going to go up, you just have to put the, the greater number on top and multiply, multiply by this particular ratio of the two amounts. If I take 18 liters times 450 over 330, this is the proportionality constant that this is going to increase by. So all I have to do is plug that in. That's really easy. That comes out to be 24.5 liters, which I'll round to 25 liters for sig fig purposes. So I don't need to do which equation do I use, how do I plug everything in. All I need to do is analyze whether or not this is going to be 450 over 330 or 330 over 450. Since it's volume, increasing the temperature will make this number get bigger. Let's look at another example. So here, I have a gas pressure initially of 1.2 atmospheres. Temperature goes from 25 degrees. Now 25 degrees is not directly proportional. It's degrees Celsius. I need that in Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273 to that to make that 298. And then I can plug it into my chart. For the other units, it doesn't matter what they are as long as they're the same before and after. But that, I need to be in Kelvin. 110 degrees, likewise. I need to add 273 to that before I can put that in my chart. That's going to be 383. Okay. I want to know what my final pressure is. Nothing about amount, nothing about volume. I'm going to ignore those. So then I'm going to go through and say, okay, I have 1.2 atmospheres to start. I'm going to write that down. And then I say, will increasing the temperature make my pressure go up or down? By increasing the temperature, they're going faster, there's bigger collisions, there's more collisions. The effect is, this is going to make my pressure increase. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my two values here, and make them into a proportionality ratio. Like this. I'm going to put the bigger one on top, because I know it's going to make the number go up. So then, I could do 1.2, times this ratio, which comes out to be 1.54. I'm going to round to 1.5 for sig fig purposes. Okay, my pressure went up because my temperature went up. I 
didn't have to do any equations. All I had to do was figure out, does it make it go up or does it make it go down? Let's take a look at one more that's perhaps a little more challenging. Here, I have oxygen, takes up 34. Maybe you don't even know what that is, okay? But hopefully you know enough to know that that's going to be your volume, 34 decimeters cubed. Okay, doesn't matter what the units are as long as they stay constant. 750 kilopascals at standard temperature. Standard temperature for gas laws is zero degrees Celsius, and I need that to be in kelvins, so I'm going to do 273 kelvins. Okay, there are my initial conditions. We have three things. Then it says I change my pressure to 340 kilopascals. So the units are the same, I don't have to convert. 405 Kelvin. In Kelvin, I don't need to change anything. What is the new volume? So I'm looking at how these things will affect volume. So temperature going up is going to make the volume go up. Moving faster, it's going to push the container walls further away. The pressure going down, remember the pressure and volume are inversely related. So pressure going down is going to make volume also go up. Make sure I didn't mess that up. I can lie here. Uh, so if the volume goes up, pressure will go down. Yep, so we're set. So we're going to start with our 34 decimeters cubed. We're going to multiply by a factor of these two numbers that makes it go up. So we're going to put 405 on top. We're going to put 273 on the bottom. And then this one is also going to make it go up. So we're going to have to put the bigger number on top, 750 kilopascals, over 340 kilopascals. Okay. So I'm going to take 34 times this ratio times this ratio, and that comes out to be 111.26. So it looks like I'm going to round that to 110 decimeters cubed. The advantage of this is that you don't have to use the equation ever. You don't have to think about which equation to use or all those things that are really not getting at whether or not you understand this. This is saying, pressure goes down, what's my effect on volume? Well, then you're demonstrating an understanding of the relationship between pressure and volume. So this is superior from a tactical standpoint as well as an understanding standpoint. This is the best way to do gas law calculations. So important things to remember, temperature has to be in Kelvins, and your units must be the same and after so that they cancel when you do your proportionality.